G'day, starting today's video with a bit of an apology. I bought a little XY table, uh, and we'll get into that a bit later on, and uh, decided I was going to just sharpen it up for reasons I'll explain. But uh, it's taken a bit longer than I, I thought it would. Uh, I did a, a scra two day scraping course in Melbourne um, some years ago now with Marco and Phil. And uh, so I'm trying to condense what I, some, of, some of what I learned there into a couple of 15 minutes videos. It's a little tricky, um, but I'm hoping that at the end of it, you know, you'll, you'll understand a little bit more about scraping and, and what it does and why we want to do it. This is the subject of uh, this video. It's a little XY table, uh, also called cross slide tables and um, uh, milling tables, all that sort of thing. Most commonly people buy them to put on their mills and then think they can have a milling machine. Uh, that doesn't actually work because the side uh, cutting forces of a milling cutter will shake the, the, um, the chuck out of your drill press. And so uh, the, only, the only reason you fit one of these to a, a drill press is so you can get a precise pattern of holes in something. This one I've, I've bought for another reason and I'll get into that later. Um, this came off a, an online site and um, you can also buy these on eBay. I'd read varying reviews on them. Some people had said you know they're, they're great, um, useful out of the box and other people said they're a kit of parts. Um, I lean towards the kit of parts um, motion at the moment. What I'm going to do is first of all check this thing and see how close it is to um, parallel between this bottom surface and the top and then um, because these surfaces are, are just machined uh, I'm probably going to give it a bit of a, a light scrape if nothing else to, uh, to get it back into um, flat and parallel and all that sort of thing uh, and you know build it up but I thought what I'd do is I'd take you through the, uh, the scraping process um, I'm not an expert scraper, I leave that to a uh, friend Phil Fairing, um, but uh, I, know the, I know the basics of it and it's probably instructive too because this sort of dovetail way is how a lot of machine tools are made, um, lathe cross slides, uh, mill slides, uh, CNC machines are, are slightly different because they, they're, they're chasing different things but this is a very common sort of construction and so if you understand how this works and what you're looking at it might come in handy for um, uh, you know next time you look at a machine tool. I've got the table on my surface plate uh, I'm going to assume that this the surface plate for this exercise is is you know perfectly um, flat and, and all that sort of thing uh, there are ways of, of telling how flat things are, but uh, as a friend of mine, Matt, uh, wants to write to me, um, absolute flatness is one of those things like absolute temperature which you never get to. Um, yes, this is true. So I've got an indicator here. This indicator is graduated in tenths of foul. Uh, I probably don't need that degree of accuracy for this, but uh, I do want to... Um, you know, get an idea. So, uh, the rel the the absolute measurement here doesn't matter. It's it's really what the relative is doing, and that's sitting uh, on on 41 there. And as I slide this across, you can see that it certainly. Whoop, in the off edge there. But that's certainly going um, downhill. Now, if that's one revolution, two revolutions, three revolutions. Uh, one division is a tenth of a thou, so each one of those is a thou, so um, what have we got here? Da, 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 ten thou. So I've got I've got thirty thou difference between here and here. Uh, and that's not good because if I've got this set up and uh, with something on there, I want to know that, that the depth that I'm drilling to or milling to here is going to be the same as the as the depth I'm milling to or drilling to here. This is 190 long and so having 30 thou, 0.75 of a millimeter uh, over that uh, distance, actually it's going that way, uh, is, is not a good thing. So I'm now going to disassemble this. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is basically make sure that this surface and this surface are parallel and so what I'll do is I'll, I'll pick uh, a, should we say, a good surface, call it that my reference surface, um, you know, scrape that off so it's nice and flat and then flip it over and do this one. 
The way these dovetails work is, is reasonably straightforward. If you consider this black one as, well, let's call it a, a, a convex dovetail, and the blue one is a concave, and the material is up around here. It's typically either this surface and that surface, or this surface and that surface, are in hard contact. And then you use a gib strip uh, pushed in with screws to push against that surface to bring that surface in contact there and to adjust out any play there. So you can imagine, for this to work properly, these two surfaces have got to be, sorry, this surface and this surface have got to be parallel and the two black lines have got to be parallel. These two surfaces have to be in the same plane. This one is in clearance. One of the first things I'm going to be doing with the concave uh, dovetails on the middle piece is basically scraping those so that those two surfaces there are parallel. Once they're parallel, I can then use those to check what these two surfaces are doing. Now, if this was a, a factory um, where we're making these things all the time, you would expect that they would have all sorts of jigs and fixtures and bits and pieces. But what I'm doing here, because this is a one-off for me, uh, I'm going to be checking for flat on these two, getting that right, getting the other surface up here parallel to that, and then using these two surfaces um, basically to find out how parallel those are, get those into parallel, uh, and then work on these dovetails, make sure I've got full contact with the dovetails. I think I'm going to end up be ending up making it some new gib strips for it, uh, and do the same for, the, for the, the piece up the top here. I've just taken this apart. Um, what can I say? Well, for a start, the gib strips are a piece of uh, just looks like steel flat. Uh, that wouldn't be quite so bad, except you can feel there's a burr there, so they haven't they haven't flattened that off. Uh, that's not going to wear properly. There is a, a, a countersink there, or it looks, actually it looks like a drill mark, uh, where this end um, screw sits in there to sort of locate it when it's sliding back and forth. The 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 screws don't seem too bad. They're a V groove. Uh, so a metric screw, I think it's it's uh, two millimeter pitch, um, M14, and they've been rolled because that material there it's 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 been brought up. Uh, that's not too bad, but these locate in these holes, and so you can see from that those holes are distinctly loose. Okay, so you know you get backlash out of that. The knobs themselves are held on with a uh, a key, but that key is so loose there that you're probably going to get some backlash from that. And the size of these, as you can see, that that shaft and that hole should be pretty much size for size. Um, you, you want a slight bit of clearance so you can get it on, but you don't want it to be shaking around like that, because it means even when you've got that nut up tight, uh, which holds things together, that's that's still going to rock around. These are a, 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 a friction fit dial which you're meant to be able to re-zero. Now, um, the screw pitch is two millimeters, so I'm a bit mystified as to why they are graduated to four millimeters. That seems a little odd to me. But the other thing is, to get that friction fit, they've just used some masking tape, and to me that's a little bit sloppy. Um, so I'll probably end up having to remake this part to get that fit better, remake this part to get the graduations right, um, probably do something with this, I'm not quite sure yet, but to tighten tighten that up a little bit. Uh, new keys. One thing that people ask sometimes is, well, why is something like this, you know, $100 or whatever it is, um, versus a, uh, a, a, you know, a brand name one like a Vertex for three or 400 there's only two ways you can make a cheaper product. One is to take the is, is to use cheaper material, and the other one is to take the labour out. So, when you're buying the brand name product, you're buying um, the reputation of of the uh, the maker, and they've got people who will check fit. They'll make sure parts are designed right, and all the rest of it. The lower in price you go, the more that stuff gets eliminated. So this would have been put together by castings, um, probably by people who didn't know what they were necessarily doing. Uh, I doubt it would have been checked very much. 
and uh, the other thing too is is this is cast iron but exactly what the grade of cast iron is I don't know um, and I suspect that uh, you know if you went to a vertex or someone like that and said what grade of cast iron are you using uh, they could point you at a grade uh, whereas these guys I think this is just generic cast iron made of old, old uh, tin cans and so on this is the uh, the scraper that I'm using it's got a carbide tip in it uh, with a with a five degree um, I guess you'd call it a negative rake to it and uh, a very slight radius there and I'm sure there's lots of people who can talk about you know what radius it needs to be this that and the other I just use the thing um, but this is the essence of it I've got some blue down here it's rather thick at the moment but I've done a pass over the top of that and I just want to see how that how that sits whether it's it's up or down or blotchy or whatever I went over this with a depth mic and measured from the top to the to the, um, the surfaces here these two points were within about 0.1 of a millimeter on here as you can see 19.2 18.0 uh, point point zero two um, so you know there's quite a bit of, of change here so it may even be that once I've got this bottom surface done I might throw this up on the mill and just try and flatten that out because taking off uh, what's that close to 1.2 millimeters worth of material will take some time with a scraper so if I can if I can make that a little bit easier uh, I will so as I said might throw that up on the mill knock that down and then scrape so the end result that I want from this part is for this surface and this surface to be parallel within well less than a thou let's put it that way um, it doesn't have to be really high precision but at the same time I want it to be of a reasonable precision put that on just a short and you can see it's got blue all over which is to be expected because I've got quite a lot on here but there's a there's a, a low spot there and there uh, and there and a bit up there so it's basically you know you scrape the the high spots off until it's it's flat so um, I'll continue working on this and uh, come back when it's uh, it's in a, a bit better shape this is after three cycles I think it is um, now two things are happening one is that the the blue I've got on the plate is getting thinner um, it's a it's basically it's a grease with paint in it and so particularly in this sort of weather where it's, it's reasonably cool at the moment um, it's not spreading out very very thin and so it's can hide results shall we say but what you can see here is that I've got some spots here that are high they've picked up the blue but I've also got some spots here that are low okay and that's actually what I'm looking for all right so I want I want to basically take off the high spots and leave the leave the low spots until they're all around about the same now you can also see some lines across here and that's the milling cutter um, from what from the original machining and so I don't mind having that there provided that's small because that'll trap a bit of oil when this thing's working so that's good um, but ideally if you were if you were after a surface plate like finish you'd have to be scraping until you got underneath that uh, those you know cut marks but uh, that's okay I think I'm going to play some I'm, I'm about to uh, to leave this I might give it one more cycle but you can see I've got uh, lines of high plus lines of low and uh, uh, not randomly scattered uh, I did go eh, eh, like that to get this you don't you don't want to move much um, so I've got you know there's, there's probably a, a, a ridge along here uh, a bit there as I said the corners are always a, a bit problematic so I might you know break that one up or um, a bit and uh, possibly break that line up a bit and then that'll be it for this side here's my block after machining uh, before machining the distance between you know diagonally opposite corners the maximum and the minimum was about one millimeter now it's 0.08 of a millimeter so three thou versus 40 much nicer to try and scrape in the other interesting thing to note is that the mill head isn't isn't quite in tram or at least not in tram enough to for a, a thickness of blue and I'm, ne I'm never quite sure how much the thickness of blue is but it's it's fractions of of um, thou so uh, it's, it's not much but you can see I'm going to have to do some work along the edges here and scrape those off and get this down to 
sort of once again uniform sort of, of flat, then I can run the indicator across it and, and just sort of see how um, out of square it is. So literally after many hours, uh, this is the result I have. If I'm careful here and hold this base, the small side I've got between basically 10 and 20 tenths. And on the large side here, I've got between 10 and 20 tenths, although it's a little on the high side. Now, what that means is that these two surfaces are within a thou of each other. And I get quite a reasonable pattern out of this, so they are, uh, shall we say, coplanar and um, uh, you know, pretty, pretty much flat. I mean, the, the um, the table is probably flat to a to a micron or two. So, you know, uh, given given what I'm doing with it, it's it's um, you know just right. It'll it'll do just nicely. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you for the next one.